Welcome to Soup Top Recipes. Spring Festival is coming soon. It's a tradition for Chinese people to celebrate it by gathering all together and enjoying the reunion dinner, or what we call Tuan Yuan Fan. In the past two years, I have shown you how to prepare huge feasts that are enough to serve 10 to 12 people, which are fancy, but also a lot of work. This year, I'm going to show you how to whip up a smaller dinner that is perfect for a three to five member family while keeping it easy and special. Here is menu. To give you an overall idea of what we're making today, please hit the like button and let's get started. Whenever you are making a big meal, it's important to plan the cooking flow. For example, I will wash and cut all the ingredients at once, marinate everything, then combine the seasonings for each recipe before starting the actual cooking. Trust me, the last thing you want is rummaging around like a headless chicken while the heat is on. Asparagus is such a wonderful vegetable, but the end is usually stringy and fibrous. I like to use a peeler to peel the skin at the end. This improves your eating experience to a different level. Cut the asparagus in halves and set them aside. Slice five button mushrooms into a quarter of an inch thick slabs. Set them aside. One large size sweet onion. Discard both ends and cut in halves. Peel the outer layers and slice them thinly. Set them aside. Two carrots. Peel them first. Slice them into a quarter of an inch thick slabs. Then julienne the slabs into a quarter of an inch thick strips. This is what we call chopstick cuts in Chinese because they share similar thickness. Set it aside. You will need some chickpeas for making the Uzbek pilaf. These are dry. Usually you have to soak them overnight, but we don't have a whole night to wait today. So I boiled a pot of water using an electric kettle and soaked the chickpeas. This way, it will only take one and a half hour to rehydrate. This is ji cai, aka shepherd's purse. It's an aromatic weed used in many traditional Chinese dishes. It is usually sold fresh like a vegetable in China. However, here in Florida, Asian grocery stores only carry it in the frozen section. If it's fresh, you have to boil it in water for three minutes to remove the oxalic acid. Frozen options is already blanched, so you just pour some hot water and give it five minutes to defrost. Squeeze the water out and dice it finely. I know you probably will ask for replacement. There is nothing like it. However, you can still make the soup using spinach instead. It will be a different flavor, but still delicious. Chinese people love to cook with garlic, ginger, scallions, and cilantro. Doing these tedious cuttings beforehand saves a lot of time. Here is a trick. Oil your fingers before cutting the hot chilies. Why? because the spicy element, aka capsaicin, is fat soluble. With the oil coating, you will not burn your skin at all. Set the chilies aside. You will need two extra bulbs of garlic for the Uzbek rice pilaf. Just remove the messy root because we're gonna add the whole bulbs into the soup and we don't want to cook with the dirty root. These are small bulbs. If yours are big, you may just need one. All right, all the cuttings are done. We can marinate the chicken wings. In a blender cup, add one tablespoon of diced scallion, one tablespoon of minced garlic, one teaspoon of minced ginger, one tablespoon of soy sauce, and two ounces of apple. Seed it and peel it. Cut it into small pieces and add to the blender cup. One and a half tablespoon of lemon juice about half of a large lemon. 
blend everything into a puree. Here is one and a half pound of chicken wings. Add the puree and mix thoroughly. Cover it and let it rest in the fridge. Next, we're gonna make all the sauces together. The first one is the lemon sauce for the chicken wings. You will need two tablespoons of honey, four tablespoons of brown sugar, three and a half tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of sambal chili sauce, or other garlic chili sauce that you like, three tablespoons of water, and one tablespoon of cornstarch. A big lemon, use a peeler and slice the lemon skin off. We only need a few slices. Thinly julienne them and dice them finely. That is about one tablespoon. Use a fork to help to squeeze some lemon juice. We need about three tablespoons. Mix it well and set it aside. The second sauce is the spicy dressing for the seafood salad. In the saucepan, add a quarter cup of cooking oil and heat it over medium heat for a minute. Add two and a half tablespoons of red chili flake, two tablespoons of diced Thai bird eye chilies, a quarter cup of minced garlic, a quarter cup of diced scallion. Stir over medium low heat for two minutes. Then add three tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of fish sauce, a quarter cup of water, and two and a half tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Continue to stir for a minute and turn off the heat. Add half cup of minced cilantro and one teaspoon of Sichuan peppercorn powder. Mix well. This smells so good and it's so flavorful. Seriously, you dip shoes in it and it'll taste good. <laughs> All right, let's quickly wash this saucepan and we'll move on to the third sauce. You will need one and a half tablespoon of cooking oil, three tablespoon of diced scallion. Stir over medium low heat for two minutes. Then add one tablespoon of minced garlic because garlic burns faster. So we add it after the scallion is almost done. Stir over medium low heat until the garlic is slightly golden. Don't burn it, otherwise it brings a bitter taste. Turn off the heat and add one tablespoon of soy sauce and one tablespoon of oyster sauce. If you want to make this dish vegan, use vegan oyster sauce. Mix well, just leave it in the saucepan for now and we will prepare all the seafood. I've got here three different kinds, including baby octopus, shrimp, and a live lobster. This is the year of dragon. Lobster is called longxia in Chinese, which translates as dragon shrimp. So it fits to the occasion perfectly. However, you can switch the type of seafood depending on what's available in your local supermarket. To prepare the lobster, you have to insert the tip of your knife at the cross section of the lobster's head. This process takes like 10 seconds, but it is a little cruel, so I separated it into a shorter video. You can check it out right here if you have never done it before. Of course, you can always ask the shop to do it for you if you're scared. I like to scrub the lobster with a brush to remove any algae. Rinse thoroughly. To wash the octopus, add one and a half tablespoon of sea salt, a quarter cup of cornstarch, and three tablespoons of Chinese cooking wine. Rub everything for three to five minutes. The salt will act like sand and scrub off any milkies from the octopus. The cornstarch and cooking wine will help to remove the unpleasant smell. Rinse it several times until the water is clear. These octopus are so small, there is no need to gut them. I bought the shrimp deveined already. However, I'm not going to peel the shell because it helps to keep the shrimp moist during the cooking process. We just need to give it a thorough rinse. Bring a big pot of water to a boil. Add six slices of ginger. These are the lemon scraps, which are perfect for blanching. Crush three scallions and add it to the water. Pour in a quarter cup of Chinese cooking wine. From the moment you add the lobster, 
Start counting the time. Cook for ten minutes for the first pound. Then add three minutes for every extra pound. This guy weighs about one point seven pounds, so I cook it for twelve minutes. During the cooking, please keep an eye on the pot. Once the water comes back to a slight simmer, turn the heat to low. When I say a slight simmer, means you should only see small bubbles coming up at a time. This is a Cantonese method of poaching seafood to ensure the flesh comes out with the perfect tenderness. On the side here, we will prepare a big batch of ice water. All right, take the lobster out of the water and shock it with the ice bath to stop the cooking process. We're gonna continue to use this pot of water to cook the rest of the seafood. Add the shrimp first and wait for one minute. Because it has the shell, so it takes a little longer to cook. Add the octopus and continue to cook everything together for two more minutes. If your octopus is bigger, you may need to cook it longer. Remove all the seafood from the water and add to the ice bath to stop the cooking process. Now you can discard the cooking liquid. Once all the seafood is completely cooled. Take the octopus and the shrimp out to drain. Detach the lobster tail from the head by twisting it. Tear both claws. Take a pair of scissors and cut the back open. Remove the vein and set the lobster tail aside. Separate all the sections. Use the back of your knife to hit the middle of the claw all the way around. This makes it easier to open and eat later. For the smaller sections, you can wrap it with a paper towel so it doesn't jump around when you hit it with the back of your knife. Add everything into a big mixing bowl and pour in the spicy dressing that we made before. Toss thoroughly. You don't need to mix the lobster's head into the dressing because later on we'll just put it on top of the dish to make a presentation. All right, this salad needs to be chilled in the fridge for at least two hours so the flavor can infuse deeply, but no longer than eight hours. Otherwise, the seafood is not fresh anymore. Whenever you remember, just come back in the middle to give a thorough toss. Also, this is a cold dish. So you do not need to reheat it later. Take the chicken wings out. We're gonna bread them. In a large container, combine two third cup of all-purpose flour, two third cup of cornstarch, and two teaspoon baking powder, which will introduce some fluffiness to the crust. Stir well. Cornstarch is the key to make the chicken crispy. If you use 100% all-purpose flour, the breading will come out doughy. Use a measuring cup to scoop out some flour mixture and reserve it on the side. Place the wings to the flour bed, then sprinkle a generous amount of flour to cover them. Place another layer of chicken wings and do the same thing. Put on the lid and shake well. Open the container and remove the chicken wings. Shake off the excess flour. Put the chicken wings on a rack. This can rest at room temperature between anywhere from 15 minutes to one hour and a half. So the starch and flour can bond together well, then it will fall off less during deep frying. That gives you plenty of time to work on the Uzbek pilaf. Wash one and a half cup of rice several times. I'm using basmati rice, but jasmine rice will also work. Soak the rice with clean water for one and a half hour. I recommend using a heavy-duty cookware, such as a cast iron pot, a Dutch oven, or a clay pot. Add five tablespoons of vegetable oil. I know that looks like a lot of grease, but this is the authentic way. The rice does not taste good if you use less oil. Toss in the sweet onion slices and patiently stir until brown. You can have the heat on high in the beginning because the onion still contains lots of moisture. Then gradually lower the heat as the color turns darker. This looks like burnt, but that is what we need in order to give the rice a desired color. 
Remove the onion from the pot. Turn the heat to high and add one pound of beef stew meat, which is already pre-cut into these one-inch cubes. Continue to stir until the beef is changed color. Normally, Xinjiang people prefer to make this dish with lamb meat, which I have done it a few years ago. You can check the previous video right here. My husband is not into lamb meat, that's why I used beef today. Add the carrot sticks and keep mixing over high heat for three minutes or until the carrots are slightly soft. Add two teaspoons of cumin powder, two teaspoons of sweet paprika, and one tablespoon of salt. Add the garlic bulbs, Thai bird eye chilies. This is the chickpeas that we soaked. Drain the water and add it to the pot. Follow up with the browned onion. I boiled three cups of water using an electric kettle. Pour it into the pot. Make sure the liquid is enough to immerse all the ingredients. Let's move the pot to the back stove and turn the heat to the lowest. Let it simmer for one and a half hour or until fork tender. During this time, we're gonna make the soup of the day, which is really easy. Place a stock pot over a medium heat stove. Add two tablespoons of oil, the mushroom slices, one tablespoon of minced garlic, one teaspoon of minced ginger, and one and a half tablespoon of diced scallion. Stir for two minutes. Pour in three and a half cup of water. You can also use vegetable stock. It will take five to six minutes to come to a boil, which means you should have plenty of time to cut the tofu. I'm using silken tofu because I love its smooth texture. However, firm tofu also works. Cut into slabs first, push the slabs to one side, then julian them into strips. Tofu sounds similar to wealth in Chinese, so we love to serve it on reunion dinner table. The belief is having one will lead to another one. All right, the water is bubbling. Add the tofu along with some salt and white pepper to taste. Quickly mix two and a half tablespoons of water with two and a half tablespoons of cornstarch until no lumps and pour it into the soup. Stir for one to two minutes or until the soup is thickened. One and a half teaspoons of sesame oil for some nutty taste. Sprinkle some gogi berry for garnish. The diced shepherd's purse is already blanched, so we will just add it the last and stir well. The soup is done. If you have been following my show, then you probably know that Chinese people love to name their dishes with auspicious intentions. So here it is. Fu Gui Ji Xiang. I wish you a wealthy and blessing new year. Keep this warm on a back stove for now. Next, we're going to fry the chicken wings. Add two cups of oil to your wok and heat it to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Split the chicken wings into two batches. Fry each batch of medium heat for five to six minutes. Please flip the wings constantly to ensure even cooking. Remove from the oil and set the wings aside. Don't freak out. It's totally okay to set the fried wings next to the raw wings because we will fry them again. Remove the starch clumps from the oil by using a fine sieve and continue to fry the second batch of the wings. Once they are golden, remove them from the oil and let them rest for 10 minutes. Increase the oil's temperature to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and add all the wings back. Fry for two to three minutes or until golden brown. Remove the wings from the oil and set them aside. By now, the rice should be done soaking. Drain it thoroughly. Check back on the beef. Take the garlic bulbs and the Thai bird eye chilies out. The beef should be very tender. That is perfect. Use a spoon to scoop out some of the braising liquid. 
because every stove and cookware are different. We have no idea how much water it has evaporated, and we don't want to find out that the broth is too much after we add the rice. It's best to take some out now. Add the well-drained rice and spread it out evenly. I can't give you a measurement here, but what we're looking for is that the liquid is just enough to immerse the rice. If you don't have enough soup, add some hot water to fill up the shortage. If you find that you have more than enough, you can just use the extra soup for something else. All right, keep the heat at the lowest and cook the rice for 15 minutes. During this time, you should be able to coat the chicken wings. Here is the lemon sauce that we made. Give it a nice shake and pour it into the wok. I see that there is a cornstarch lump. Make sure you stir it well, then turn the heat to medium and mix the sauce for two to three minutes. When you see the liquid is thickened, introduce the chicken wings back into the wok. Toss everything until the wings are coated nicely. Garnish them with some lemon slices. Due to the implied meaning of chicken wings, this dish is called zhan shi gao fei, symbolizing flying to soar great heights, wishing your life can step into a new stage and rise steadily. Now, let's get back to the rice pilaf. Remove the lid and you will see that the rice has absorbed most of the liquid. Carefully push all the rice to the middle to create a little mountain. The purpose behind is that we want most of the rice to be lifted by the braised beef, so it is actually steaming instead of boiling in the liquid. That will make the rice firm and fluffy instead of soft and mushy. You can see there is still quite a lot of liquid at the bottom of the clay pot. Place the lid on and continue to cook at low heat for 10 more minutes to evaporate all the broth. Meanwhile, we can cook the last dish. I already brought a pot of water to a boil. Add a drizzle of oil and toss in the asparagus. The oil will help to retain the vivid green color so your dish looks nicer. Cook them for two minutes. Take them out of the water and mix with the scallion sauce that we made before. This smells so good. If you know anybody who does not like asparagus, feed them this. <laughs> it will change their mind. This dish is named Lu Xin Gao Zhao, a popular festival greeting for Chinese New Year. Now the rice is done. You have to give it a good mix. Pilaf, aka shou zhua fan in Chinese, is a popular dish in Xinjiang. In the local catering culture, this dish is often served without utensils and you have to eat it with your bare hands. So I named this dish Xin Mian Zhua Cai Fan. Take the seafood out of the fridge and we will quickly make a presentation. We have the dragon shrimp, tiger palms, and the octopus with eight tentacles. So I named this dish Long Teng Hu Yue Ba Fang Lai Cai to wish you a big prosperity in the new year. Now you can serve everything on the table. Reunion dinner is the biggest event out of the entire year for Chinese people. So the things that we do and the names that we're giving to the dish always have wishful meanings. Yes, it does take some effort, even though I try to make it easy, but you can still manage this dinner in one day if you plan it right. Trust me, my grandmom used to spend weeks to prepare it, so one day is truly considered easy. I worked all day and I'm so ready to enjoy the dinner with my family. I wish you long nian kuai le, shen ti jian kang, wan shi ji xiang, and I'll see you next time. Bye!